Oh my God, is this the bearing problem from hell? Sir, you can't be on a bike in the drive-thru. I'm just picking up my prescription. I'm not on a bike. Yeah, but you have to be in some type of car. I can't. I'm, I'm standing right here. Hey, he's up here. You know that horrible noise is not the bearing. <laughs> I have, a, I have a dried uh, leaf sucked up into the case here, rubbing against the wheel. I haven't been able to get it out quite yet. Ah, there we go. There you go. Just fell out. Ah, much better. Bearing problem fixed. I wish they were all that easy, don't you? Okay, so we're doing something I haven't done in quite a while since uh, the gyms were closed. I actually have my InMotion V11. And we are uh, riding on my lunch hour. Now I am riding with a purpose. I am riding to Walgreens to pick up my prescription for the uh, pre preparatory <laughs> solution for my upcoming colonoscopy. Yes, yes, you young, you young guys out there can all look forward to this someday. Um, this is actually a follow-up. I had my first colonoscopy when I was 50 during the um, colonoscopy they removed a non-cancerous polyp and because of that they have me on uh, the three-year colonoscopy schedule as opposed to a five or ten year just to be safe I guess so hopefully they go in this time and, and all is clear and I don't have to get it every three years but that is what I'm doing I'm picking I'm picking up the prep medicine prep medicine for it and um, yeah prepping for a colonoscopy is one of my least favorite things in life so while we're talking about least favorite things, we can talk about um, hollow motor bearings. They definitely are not very, they are definitely not very high on my favorite things list, but there was a couple interesting things that came to my attention recently. So I thought I would talk about them quickly on my way to Walgreens. So those of you that are unfamiliar, let me do a quick recap. I've done uh, a number of videos on this subject and it has to do with the, um, hollow motors and some of the problems they've been having specifically with uh, bearings and water ingress into the motor themselves in a nutshell basically what's what we're what we've been discovering is the bearings and hollow motors are their achilles heel they have been failing pretty pretty badly especially if you're in a climate where you're going to be exposing those bearings to uh, wetness and other or, or wet snow or slush or anything like that it all started with the Emotion V11. I believe that I was, I might have been the first person that experienced this firsthand, where my weak old um, V11 started sounding horrible after riding in the rain. The, the next time I took it out, it, was, it sounded horrible, and that was the first um, time I recall it coming to light, and since then, it's only gotten worse. The new Gotway wheels all use a hollow motor as well, a hollow motor design, and it's amazing how much bigger the bore is on the uh, Gotway hollow motors. I saw this video I'm gonna be referring to in a bit showed the difference in size of the V11 bearing versus a Gotway RS bearing. I swear to God that the Gotway bearing looks at least double the size, if not more. It's crazy. So yeah, the, the problem is actually uh, exacerbated with the Gotway wheels because the bearing is so much bigger, has even more surface area is further pushed out towards the edge of the wheel where it's, it's, it's closer to being exposed to uh, the elements, whether that be salt, slush, water, whatever. The bigger that bearing, the, the, the more it's going to be in harm's way. So in a nutshell, it seemed up front that the, the initial thought was, hey, they're just using bad quality bearings. That's the bottom line. If when you try to price replacement bearings of higher quality in those size factors, you'll find out very quickly that they, for whatever reason are very very expensive for really good bearings and when you look at the models that are the uh, part numbers that were used in the wheels from the factory they were not good quality bearings the simple thinking back then was hey if they just put good bearings in it would be fine right well apparently it's not that simple so what appeared to be happening was some people have been taking it upon themselves to you know try to fix this themselves they would they would lay out the money for um, better bearings 
and replacing themselves in their Gotway or V11s. And there have been, despite using higher quality bearings, there have been repeat problems with bearing failure. Um, I guess some people were looking into it some more, and there was a there was a guy that commented on my video, one of my videos about hollow motors, and asked if I had seen another video that was posted out there, and it was a video of a guy changing the bearings on his V11. He was, you know, he was doing a whole thing where you got a, a torch to heat up the metal, so the bearing just drops out, and you know he was he was doing it all the right way. Obviously, I uh, knew what he was doing, but at the, after he switched the bearings, there was one. Uh, very interesting step that he took he drilled a small hole right through the opening of the um, of the bearing to allow and, and the purpose of it is to allow air into that inner surface because has been talked about lately is and it was I, I believe it was first brought up by eco drift I believe and then this guy uh, was demonstrating as well is that there appears to be an issue with a vacuum being created that vacuum is being created by a big temperature difference between the inside of the bearing and the outside. And that big temperature uh, difference is creating a vacuum, and that vacuum is making it very easy to pull moisture and other things through the bearing. And doing that is uh, contaminating the bearings, and the bearings are, are, are failing shortly thereafter. So what this guy was doing by drilling that hole, he drilled a hole, put a little uh, piece of tubing there, sealed it up with silicone. What he was doing was um, bypassing that vacuum. It basically makes it impossible for a vacuum to form because it's exposed to outside air. And the theory being, once you do that, you no longer will have all these contaminants being pulled through the bearing. And uh, in theory, that would address the problem. Now, I have not heard enough long-term feedback to see if it is a rock-solid fix. Um, if it is, of course, this isn't something that all wheel owners are going to want to do. This is something that wheel manufacturers should be fixing and, and definitely addressing going forward. I really am surprised how it seems like all the hollow motor uh, wheel manufacturers seem to... Uh, not know that these were potential pitfalls with the design. I'm gonna see if I can go through the drive through to pick this up. I am on a vehicle, right? So it should let me do it. I'm picking up my prescription. I'm not on a bike. Yeah, but you have to be in some type of car. I can't. I'm, I'm standing right here. Right, but if there's a car, there's but a chance that it can hit you. There's, like, there's no car in the lane. That's why I was just trying to get this done quick. Right, but we still can't. Well, I have this stuff here. I, I don't want to leave it outside. That's why I'm here. You can't, I mean, it literally takes 30 seconds, right? I'm just picking up a prescription. Right, but we can't. It's, What's we the difference with this and if I was on a motorcycle? Well, sir, we just can't. You're not in a car or anything. If on a motorcycle, you're allowed to pick up a, a prescription? I don't know. I just know we can't help you like that. This is really kind of silly. All right. Walgreens doesn't make any sense. Can't help me if I'm on a bike. All right, well, that'll be one of the highlights. So now i got to try to park this. I'm just going to walk it in the store then. Screw them. Well, needless to say, this Walgreens is not uh, one of my favorite locations right now. How annoying. Went in there to uh, pick it up, and then when I pick it up, it's full price, $150 for this, $150 to torture yourself. Not covered on my insurance, but the the uh, prescription that was written said if this stuff was not covered by insurance, that there was an alternative uh, that they should issue. And they, uh, they missed that, that additional direction. I just I just paid it. I have a flex spending account, so I just paid the money because I said, okay, well, if you guys give me the other stuff, can you just give it to me? Oh no, that'll be another two or three hour wait. I'm like, oh Jesus. Okay, I'll just give me it. I guess I'm gonna just bite the bullet. So now I have my colonoscopy prep. 
How wonderful is that? We're over in uh, Sugden now. Sugden, uh, well, I guess I don't need this anymore, do I? We're over in Sugden um, Park. It's 1225. All right, so we got a little bit of time here. I've ridden this park a few times. This is where um, I did a lot of my um, breakthroughs with learning to ride backwards. I, I came here a few days and did some backwards practice, and this is where I, I I really, I literally had my click moments where I went from being able to ride, you know, 10 to 15 feet backwards to, uh, you know, 100 yards, 150 yards backwards. So this place does have some EUC significance to me. Oh, that CVS girl annoyed me, man. I mean, I understand rules are rules, but I, I'm, I've always been the type of person that uh, when you when you refuse to apply situational um, observation or, or you know to a to rules it annoys me when you're just what black and white this is the way it is and uh too bad too bad if it doesn't make sense that's the rules that usually does when i'm confronted with that situation i usually don't react well to it and uh, this is another one of those times so despite that situation being frustrating there was one one, uh, one good thing about it when i was in the uh, the drive through lane i already had my credit card out that i used for flex spending yeah, anyways, I had my uh, my flex spending credit card out, or debit card, I guess it is, te technically. I had it out when I was in the, um, the drive through lane waiting, and then when they said I couldn't pick it up that way, I um, I left it out, just had it on top of the wall, pinned, pinned against the wallet, and evidently as I was walking in the front door, I dropped it, did not realize it. And thank God, um, the FedEx delivery guy saw it. <laughs> and... Uh, he grabbed it for me and gave it to me, so thank God he saw that because uh, that's the last thing I would have needed was to lose that card as well. That would have just been a uh, nice bitter cherry on top. It's a buzzard party. What are you guys doing? What are you doing? All right. So, um, hollow motors, yeah. I think I said everything I need to say about that. So we'll see if, if um, equalizing the pressure between the... Um, area inside and outside of the hollow motor bearing is the uh, the eventual cure for the problems in addition to using better quality bearings because I think that's a that goes without saying if you use terrible bearings you're gonna get uh, terrible results and uh, just just one more uh, point about the hollow bearings I, uh, hollow motor bearings as I heard some people say oh yeah you know I think it's overblown I don't I don't think it's a big deal yeah, a very small amount of people have experienced any problems with those bearings. I mean, if that was the case, Jason would not have removed all of the hollow motor uh, gotway wheels off his website if it was just a uh, minute, inconsequential thing. So just keep that in mind. So the other, other thing that came to mind uh, to talk about recently was Marty and his testing of the M Super Pro. Marty has been glowing in his praise of the M Super Pro, which, as I mentioned before, is not surprising, right? But he did do his range test using the same parameters that he normally does as far as speed and route. He tries to be pretty consistent, keeping his speed like 18-ish maybe, on average, something like that. He got just over 100 miles of range, the first wheel to ever do that. So that was a big deal for Marty. I think when he did something similar on the Sherman, he got to like 94 miles, I believe. So when he ran the numbers ahead of time, he didn't think he'd be able to do that because um, normally Gotway wheels, correct me if I'm wrong, because I'm working off memory, not, not I don't have a, a piece of paper in front of me. I, I thought uh, they normally will allow you to take the wheel, a 100 volt wheel will allow you to take the pack down to 78 volts. And uh, Historically, that's been their lower limit. Apparently, with the M Super Pro, at least the one that Marty was uh, riding, it allowed him to take the uh, battery pack all the way uh, below 75 volts. I think when he called it quits, it was like 74.8 volts, if I'm uh, correct. And if I'm not, Marty will correct me. So yeah, that difference allowed the wheel to actually surpass the Sherman, the Sherman as far as range goes. So yeah, Marty was very happy with that. Um, I have no doubt Marty will buy a Monster Pro. Um, as he mentioned, it is it is very much a niche wheel. It is not it, it does not have the universal appeal that a Sherman does, and doesn't have the versatility that a Sherman does either. But um, I have always said, 
the uh, the monster, my monster, my Gen 1 monster was my most favorite open road cruising wheel that I owned. And I had no doubt that a Monster Pro would um, make me feel a similar way. Right now out of my fleet, my Sherman is my, is my uh, all around best cruising wheel. So Marty likes the Monster Pro. I'm sure he sold some, uh, sold some wheels for Bogoti. That way, Bogoti. Is it Bogoti or Bogode? I mean, I like saying Bogoti more than Bogode, so I don't know. Kind of rhymes with chode, right? Nice thing about taking this route back to the office is the speed limit's only 25, so on the uh, B11, it's not a real big deal to uh, maintain traffic speed. I mean, this is just like riding in New York City, right? Look at this. Man, I got I to I dodge that, that tree, and, um, and uh, well, there's a delivery van. Got all these mailboxes I got to avoid. It's crazy, man. Riding in Florida, it's crazy. You got to see it to believe it. And spoiler, I, I still don't plan to buy a Monster Pro. If anything, the, really the only wheel that I know of that's, that's coming uh, that has my curiosity enough that I might actually consider buying it in the near future is uh, the Mystery in Motion wheel. I don't know if it's officially going to be called a V12, but there's some uh, some talked about features on this wheel. I just went by the turn that I wanted to take. So I was so excited about the Emotion V12. Um, it has some uh, potential features that um, are very interesting, are very different. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm uh, saving my pennies for right now. Okay, guys, I'm going to be heading back to the, uh, the Model Y. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed learning that you uh, can't take your EUC through a uh, drive through at Walgreens in Southwest Florida, at least, or at least that location. And... Um, Hopefully I also got you excited about your future uh, with uh, colonoscopies. It's really, it's, it's, uh, it's a real milestone in your life, let me tell you. But uh, that's all I have for you for now. If you found this video interesting, please give it a big thumbs up. If this is your first time visiting the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you're going to subscribe, you can always hit the notify bell, which is up, up there, I think, somewhere or over there. I don't know. It's somewhere. Feel free to leave your comments, suggestions, ideas, and thoughts below. Thanks for riding along with me on my uh, my lunchtime. You'll see me again this weekend, although I do have a couple Tesla videos that I am planning to do, a couple Tesla mods, but maybe we'll get a ride in as well. We'll see how the, how the weekend goes. You just never know what I'll stumble into. Have a great Friday, guys. Till next time, Duffman out. Instagram. Gotta love the automatic hatch.